Am I live? Of course I'm live. People deluded. I'm back again. Arsenal news show business. We've been linked with Camavinga. Mikel Arteta has given his pre-Bayern Munich press conference. There's been an update on Mikel Arteta's contract. Benjamin White has won player of the month for March. And there's a bit of other isms and schisms to get over. So yeah, people, I apologise for not doing this live. You know, I thought, let me let you lot take in the live streams I've already done on the topic of Arsenal versus Bayern Munich. We are doing a watch along. We kick off at 8 p.m. on Tuesday, so I'll be live from 7 p.m. So smash the like button on this video, turn on your notification bells, and let's get into it and not waste any time. Now, where Arsenal are concerned, I don't look at the league table, I still don't know where we are, but apparently in 2024, we've got 10 victories or 10 wins, one draw and zero defeat. Zero L's like Morrison, only some people will understand that. We've scored 33 goals, we've conceded four, we've beaten Brighton 2-0, Luton 2-0, Drew with City, beat Brentford. 2-1, dealt with Sheffield United 6-0, slaughtered them really and truly, won four goals to one against Newcastle, beat Burnley by 5-0, the Hammers got hammered and we firmly burst their bubbles as we won 6-0 there, took points off title contenders, Liverpool with a 3-1 victory, mashed up Crystal Palace 5 goals to nil and won 2-1 against Nottingham Forest. I know you can't keep a clean sheet all the time but we're scoring goals, we're keeping balls out the back of our net and we're doing exactly what we need to do. 31 points from a potential 33 is ridiculous. Definitely when you go back to December and what could have, what looked like was going to happen, people. That will unfortunately be the period we'll look at and say, oh, that's where it went left if we don't obviously claim a major trophy. But yeah, moving on, Mikel Arteta has provided his press conference. Let's see every word he has said ahead of Bayern Munich, in which we will play them in 24 hours. Make no mistake, Bayern Munich are no small fry. You know, we were told we wanted to move to the Emirates to compete to be on Bayern Munich's level. And I would say based on these two years, I mean, this is our first year back in the Champions League. This is the first time it's really looked anything close to moving to as a football club to do exactly that. We all know when I say Bayern Munich in the Champions League, 10-2 comes to mind. Let's make sure we don't get embarrassed and let's relish it because this is the scenarios we wanted to be in. On the topic of relishing, Mikel Arteta on his players potentially relishing such. We're really enjoying the moment. This is where we want to be. We're in a really good position in the Premier League and we're in a really good position in the Champions League. We have a big task ahead of us against one of the most successful teams in Europe and that's the hurdle we have to overcome and we are looking forward to it. I mean, in terms of looking beatable, this is the most beatable Bayern Munich side I've seen, but you need to be wary of teams struggling the domestically because that can be a source of strength in European competition as we've seen whenever Emre's won the Europa League his domestic teams ain't been doing the best Real Madrid have won the Champions League on a couple of occasions where they haven't been doing the best in their domestic league I don't want to praise them but you could extend that to Chelsea and I'm sure there's plenty of other examples people we should be relishing it on the tough test or the threat of Bayern Munich they're a tough team. I'm a big fan, a big admirer of Thomas Tuchel, his teams, the way they settle and play, the way they transmit. I learn a lot about him and looking at Bayern Munich, when you are analysing this league, you see why they're a top team. We have prepared very well and we have to take our game where we want it. And if we do that, we have a chance to win it. You know, it'd be lovely to score a couple goals, keep a clean sheet, go over there, put in a... Manchester City away, S defensive performance, shut up shop into the semi-finals against Manchester City or Real Madrid, which is scary in itself. But if we were to get past there, either of them, there's a final at Wembley, in which it's obviously in London. Mikel Arteta has a great record there as well. And obviously, we all saw how the Euros final ended where Saka missed a penalty. How good would it be if we won the Champions League at, at Wembley? in the same stadium. But as you don't know in life, the dream is free, the hustle is sold separately. So we know they're a big threat. It's Bayern Munich. They're a big dog, regardless of whatever is being said. And apparently, completely off topic, you know, we know their fans won't be in the Arsenal Arsenal Stadium or the Emirates Stadium because of a, of, of a ban. Apparently, Arsenal have issued out threats. I saw the email. If you sell your ticket and Bayern Munich are there, they're going to be tracking people. On how we stop Harry Kane. I mean, we stopped Haaland, so there must be a chance. You know, Harry Kane's going to get a penalty. It's inevitable that him and or Serge can have score. You can't really stop players, you know. All we need to do is win the other battles, really and truly. You know, if we score three goals and, and Kane scores one, great. But with our better defensive performance, specifically our duo, Gabriel and Saliba, going to have to stand up to be counted. And the whole team's in charge of defending Um 
But he is uh, him, him himself has said it's not only him. I think that the individuals that they have all the individual qualities of all those players and him in particular and the ability that he has. The best thing to do is what we do collectively and try to promote certain things. Obviously, I think Mikel Arteta is bang on, but hasn't been drawn into specifics. But they're blessed with individuals. They've got great centre midfielders, players that can kill you if they're not necessarily in the game for 90 minutes, players that can play in the pockets like like uh, Musiala. Obviously, they've got the Sarnes, the Gnabrys, the Harry Kanes. They've got littered quality all around the side. So, yeah, the, ironically... I think the best form, we've got to defend. I can't emphasise that enough, but I think the best form of defence could be offence because if Bayern Munich look frail in any regards, it has been defensively this whole season. Um, on if his record against us is a factor, hopefully not. On what makes him such a threat, I'm not going to waffle about Harry Kane. He's a quality player, a top, a top striker. He's been doing it for years. On there being no away fans in this ground, it will be a full house, a lot of passion and emotion. We haven't had this opportunity for 15 years. So that tells you how special this night is going to be for us. So we're going to have to put everything into every ball to make it happen. He hasn't been drawn on Jurgen Klopp's comments in relation to us beating Man United on how much our team has grown with leaders on the pitch. Hopefully we are better than last season. We have learned a lot of stuff over the last few months. I think players have evolved. We all have tried to improve to be better than we were a year ago. It's been a really demanding season and it's still not done yet. It's been a huge step for us to be in this competition. And on top of that, be competing in the Premier League the way we are doing. This is the challenge. But as well, we are so excited to be part of that. Then when drawn on the historic clashes against Bayern Munich, which haven't been kind to Arsenal, I'm sure there was a year Mesut Ozil scored against them and we won and Bellerin, after getting destroyed by Costa, had a great game. But nine times out of ten, we've been, our pants have been pulled, you know, up, down, wedged all sorts against these lot. They've just, they've just demolished us, essentially. It's there, that's history. And when you look at the history of the competition, that's clear. The nature and the capacity to perform on the biggest stages, we have to prove that, that's for sure. On how we've managed to recover from setbacks, hopefully it's in their nature. Something has to be within them and we'll try to inspire and get that part out of them as much as possible to become better, to be more competitive and have that resilience and will to win and improve every single day. Collectively, if you do that, I think the outcome is powerful. On whether we have to be perfect to win what we want this season, being perfect in football is difficult you have to chase the illusion of perfection which i think we're doing we have to be better than the opponent first and then you have the moment you have to be ruthless fat scaffold we have been really consistent and trying to be better than our opponents lately especially and we have to carry on doing a lot of things that we're already doing on 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 that tying on to that he said yes we're in a good moment winning and performing the way we're doing it always helps it brings a really good spirit and just be focused on the next match tomorrow is a big task but we're looking really forward to it on whether he's been surprised by Bayern's form I don't know football is such a competitive environment and so difficult to be consistent that this can happen to anyone and how we train to block shots I mean he's not going to say exactly how but yes we do work on that but hopefully it's in the players nature as well we can't just allow teams to shoot in our goal we have to prevent every possible scenario that occurs before that and when it gets to that stage it's the ultimate opportunity before our goalkeeper makes an intervention which goalies are the last line of defense so we have to try and to control everything that happens in that chain on what he learned managing the Champions League knockout stages for the first time I think that evolution is not in relation to me I would think my evolution would be in many other areas not just because of our results but as a club which is the most important thing we haven't been in this position for 14 years there's a 14 year old Arsenal fan that ain't seen us in this stage of of, of the competition and the opportunity to go through to the next stage for 15 years. And for this club, that's long, long time. We re we realise that and that's why we have this hunger and desire to make it happen. He hasn't been drawn on whether he's asked Xavi Alonso for tips. I mean, you can just watch that Granit Xhaka. Um, then he said on what it's like to play against Bayern when he was a player. I don't know. I can understand those debates, those opinions. For us, it's easier to just focus on the performance that we have to put in to be a top and exceptional team with exceptional individuals. We have to earn every right in the pitch to make it happen and try to win the game. Um, on the relevance of their domestic form and then obviously in the champs, from my side, no, as it's something that we have no say or control over and we just have to expect all the time the best from our opponent. Against Bayern, Brighton or Aston Villa, regardless of where they are, always have to expect that they play in their best possible way and be prepared to outperform them. On if the criticism they face makes them more dangerous, he said hopefully not. On... On how the first leg being at home changes the dynamics. I mean, you've got to play home or away regardless. There's no away game, so it doesn't really mean anything. But it does, you know, the 12th man factor could play somewhat of a part. 
Um, we know that every knockout stage is like this. The rules have changed as well, and that's very important. You have to be able to manage the game and control as many scenarios as we can within the 180 minutes. And next week, as in the return leg, will be interesting because, God forbid, it doesn't go like this, but imagine it goes into extra time, you know, considering the calendar list we've had already, it goes into extra time. And then, obviously, we've also got a game at the weekend as well. Um, it could be mad, really. But we'll have to see. That's neither here nor there. On the mentality of not fearing any opponents, that's something that we're looking to do in every single match. If we're able to do it in one match and not in three, then it's not part of us. To make sure that things are ingrained within the team, we are consistently delivering this type of thing. I'm proud of what the team is showing, the character and mentality they are showing, and we have to carry on doing it, which is facts, man. I don't think anyone can disagree with the gaffer. But Kyle Saka off the back of the Brighton game said we're in a better place than last season. Yes, 100%. I feel like we're in a much better place Place physically and mentally from last season. We've learned big lessons from last year. So we know what we need to do in these type of games. In these type of games, we need to score early, keep a clean sheet, work hard and not give away any cheap goals. I hope the players that have been a part of it have learned the lessons from how the champion, sorry, how the Europa League knockout ties have gone and obviously the pain of the last two seasons, how they've ended regarding what we've been going for. So I hope that applies to all competitions which is facts. I feel like recently in 2024, we've been so solid. We've been really impressive. So we're happy for that. Then he said in relation to, you know, the games we've got, I was really excited to be back here today and to win as well. So it's nice. And obviously I want to get in the rhythm because we have some big games coming up, people. Then he said, you know, he expects a stadium full of gooners. I'm excited all with the boys excited. So we need to recover and be ready for Tuesday. Facts, man. Big up Benjamin White. He's won Arsenal's March Player of the Month award and he absolutely deserves that really, especially after signing a new deal and doing what he's doing on the football pitch. Gabriel Jesus has been speaking in relation to the Champions League and insists we're not phased by, he's not phased by reports that Arsenal want to sign a striker. Though admitted it's not easy watching someone else play up top for the Gunners. <clears throat> Make sure you need to play because you have been plagued by 14 um Sorry, you've missed out on 14 games because you've been plagued by knee and hamstring problems. And I will always defend Gabriel Jesus. Whether he's a starter or not, he's a valued squad member for me. But Arsenal fans are getting impatient. As you lot know, we have been linked with Ivan Tony, Yoko Rez, and Victor Osserman of Napoli people. The man himself has said, they already know if they want to sign a striker. So maybe this question is not for me. My job is to work hard, sorry, work, train hard, improve what I have to improve and win the games to try to help Arsenal win and then obviously win trophies. The speculation will always be there, not only here, but every club. People want to decide who the club want to sign. This is happening not just at Arsenal, but a lot of clubs. Then he said, it's it's not easy play. Sorry, Jesus went on to say that while it's not easy playing in his unfavoured position, he'll do what it takes to help his side. I don't want to come here and say Gabby doesn't care about playing as a winger when his position normally is a nine. This is part of the season. You don't complain. I never complain. When I get the chance, I show the manager and everyone else why I have to play. Big him up. This part of the season, I'll put my ego aside and do what the manager wants to help the team. It's not easy, not just for me, but for Eddie and Ketia as well. Kai is having amazing games and scoring. That's the price you pay if you want to be in a big club. Big, big words. And I love that from him. He has also spoken potentially about Bayern Munich's threats. Everybody knows the quality of Harry Kane. For me, he's the best finisher in the world. So it's great to play against this kind of player. Obviously, we want to keep him quiet in the game and we want to try to win the game. It's not only Harry Kane, but a lot of players like Sane, my old friend Musiala. How you know him? Tell him to come to the Emirates. Uh, Coleman, Thomas Muller, what a player. So it's a lot. Serge Gnabry, they have quality players there. Everyone knows their history. They won a lot of titles in the Champions League and Bundesliga. Everyone knows the quality of the club, the amazing quality of the players. It doesn't matter if they struggled last game or the last two or three games. They're still buying. They can still come and hurt us. That's the thing we have to think about and to have in our minds. And to be fair, Gabriel Jesus, you've saved your best performances in terms of like technical stuff for the Champions League. If you start or play any part against Bayern, do what you need to do, people. Um so that's what he said. He also said, I don't remember the last day I played football without pain. That's crazy, you know, and it just shows you how much they put their health on the line. Odegaard has been speaking as well, folks. He said um, in relation to Kane, he's a good player, of course. I've played against him a few times. We know the quality he has in the box. He's also good in link up. 
We are facing a good team on Tuesday. He then said, I think we should respect him being Kane, but I don't think you should fear anyone and we should focus on ourselves and the quality we have in our team. And that is all. They, in brackets, Bayern Munich, have had some strange results in the league. But if you look at the team, you can see the quality they have. We know that. We know they're a really strong side. Really good individuals as well. It'll be a tough battle, but we are ready. Big him up for that, people. He then said, all the players who came in this season have been brilliant. You just see them getting better and better. Following, He said that following our 3-0 win against Brighton, folks. Gnabry has described it as a do-or-die game, really, against his former club. It's a do-or-die game. That's where we're usually particularly strong. Reaching the semi-finals of the Champions League would give us a huge boost. It's our big goal. It's probably the only goal because, you know, Leverkusen have all but confirmed the Bundesliga title and doing what Dortmund couldn't do last year. Maybe that's the Xhaka effect. Smash the like button and let me know your thoughts. Arsenal have had what it takes to play at the top again for a long time. The team has a certain flair and ex ex exude strengths. The odds are probably 50-50. Maybe being a flattering us a bit, but... Quietly, I think we've got a stronger chance just on form. In, the, in Going into the game, I'm not too sure because psychologically, those players from Bayern have been here before as opposed to us. And I do think across the two legs against Porto, we did, we did show that this is still a bridge that we need to cross being in these kind of environments. Um, if I'm honest, Arsenal have been on a very good run since Christmas. In any case, you can't really say anything bad about the team that's competing for the Premier League title. They're strong, good finishers and are keen on having possession. They're formidable in their own stadium with their fans behind them and up and down the country. Stadiums are empty and everywhere we go. It'd be a difficult task with two strong teams coming up against each other, people. Big up Serge Gnabry. He also said, I'm looking forward to meeting the people I know from the back room staff and the club but of course the main thing is that we want to win Arteta is now fully absolved in his role as a coach and thinks very strategically in my time he was already an experienced player he was the captain a leader who spoke to everyone and communicated a lot he was very helpful to us as young players back then he built us up always gives us good tips always tried to guide us so that we stayed focused and gave everything come to Arsenal and then obviously said it was a privilege to play for Arsenal and all of that sort of stuff. Big up Gnabry and unfortunately he has struggled for fitness, continued fitness this season, people. Muller has said everyone involved realises that we're not in the best period in the club's history. With my many years of experience, I'm already in fighting mode for Tuesday. Obviously that's against us. We can't change the result this way anyway. It's no good us picking on each other, but the resentment in me is also looking forward to Tuesday. We'll give it our all on Tuesday. Two days till we face Arsenal. It's honestly a tough opponent for us. After back-to-back -back defeats in the Bundesliga, our confidence seems to be pretty low. Hopefully, we can make that even lower. We should take this situation as a chance to surprise everyone at the big stage against the Gunners. It's not the moment to give up. Let's go, boys. Um, so, that's that. In relation to Fabrizio Romano and Mikel Arteta, he has said... Uh, the expectation is for Arsenal when Mikel Arteta is to discuss a new long-term contract very soon because it's a priority for all parties involved to continue together. Now, I'm no fly on the wall. I personally think Mikel Arteta has signed a new deal and when the time's right, they'll announce it. Or any, if anything, he just needs to go around the Emirates and take some pictures in his suit. I mean, you know, it doesn't make sense to not hold on to a man that is showing the project projecting, you know, we're doing what we need to do. He's doing a lot of great stuff. He's made us competitive again. The signings are all working out. A lot of young players, while anything can happen in football, have committed their future. It would make no sense unless he wants to go somewhere else, which I don't know him, but I doubt such. Arteta is not even discussing with other clubs, was never close to talks with Barcelona, full on focus on Arsenal. Expectation for Arsenal and Arteta is to discuss new long, new long term contract very soon, said the man himself. Now, we've been linked with Camavinga. Now, I would love Camavinga. I think a bit like Chua Many, they're the players you've got to buy when they're still at France. Once they get to Real Madrid, unless Real Madrid make it clear you can be sold, it's a myth. Camavinga would be amazing. You know, he can fill in that left back, but he's a wonderful player in midfield. And him in that left, in that, well, him and Declan Rice as a partnership, forget about it. We know he's not leaving Real Madrid. There's no real need. And Real Madrid would be crazy to let him go, in my opinion. Um, for what it's worth, the report states Arsenal will be willing to pay up to 110 million for the player, but Real Madrid are not studying this possibility. They believe that he's going to become the best midfielder in the world and they do not want to risk losing the talent of his calibre. Rightly so. He's Listen, he's going to be a complete midfielder if he isn't already, people. So it's a bit of a non-starter. Sorry to upset you, but there you have it. Apparently, Arsenal are ready to offer Leandro Trossard a new contract at the Emirates Stadium barely a year since the Belgium international attacker arrived, which shows he's doing all right. Money well spent. 
Fell, you know, everything's got a silver lining. I still think Mudrick's got some quality, but that big money signing for Chelsea hasn't worked out, probably because of the, the environment, you know, nature versus nurturing, all of that. But it's fair to say Trossard was a decent plan B and he's been a bit of a hero at times for Arsenal. 24 million well spent. So big up the 29-year-old who has 12 goals in all comps this season, people. And obviously got the got the confirmation goal against Liverpool. Apparently, Arsenal scheduled a meeting with Trossard to extend, or better yet, to discuss extending his contract by a year from 2026 to 2027, plus the option of an additional season. Sources have revealed that these talks have been planned since Trossard arrived at the club 15 months ago. He always held a desire for his long-term future to be scheduled for the foreseeable future. Indeed, the deal taking the winger to the gun has nearly broke down as the player was unhappy with the with Arsenal's contract offer in terms of comparative short duration. I mean, that, I don't know, it's all speculative, I guess. But there we have it, people. Um, apparently, Victor Jokera's agent, Hassan Sentinkaya, was in Lisbon this weekend for Sporting's fixture with Benfica, OK? Agent watching his client play football, OK? And you'd imagine Arsenal and other club scouts were there. Apparently, Jokerez remains Arsenal's number one priority in attack for the summer transfer window, despite Sporting expecting a 25-year-old um, release clause of €100 million Euros to be matched in order for him to be sold. I don't think they, they want that. Now, obviously, you know, Napoli are apparently eyeing a final duo. They've been linked with Jimenez. Now, that's a bit irrelevant because they're trying to replace Osserman. Uh, We all know we're probably not going to go for him. But apparently the likes of of Chelsea, Arsenal and Man United have all been linked with a move for Osserman. But it appears that the battle for his signature will ultimately come down to the Blues and French Giants PSG, who have earmarked the Nigerian as Mbappe's heir. Man United, it seems, will focus their attention on someone like Tony, while Arsenal's top target is Victor Jokerez. The sporting striker isn't the only striker the Gunners are looking at though and he too won't be cheap one alternative to the swede could be final santiago jimenez who has been previously linked with the gunners people so we'll have to see exactly what's going on in relation to any striker really but there you have that fulham apparently have been linked with a move for young charlie Patton. Oh, the club might say do you know what let's make a profit apparently you know they're eyeing the 20 year old swansea loney and technically arsenal midfielder apparently Mikel arteta remains retains the belief that Patino, who has been long tipped for the top has the capacity to succeed in the premier league sooner rather than later and it appears that fulham share that perspective so we'll have to see in that regards, really, but we don't know. Once again, Joshua Zertsky links won't go away, people. Apparently, De Marzio, Italian journalist Gianluca De Marzio, has revealed that the Gunners are ready to offer the Bologna hitman 115 grand a week in order to snare the Dutchman. Apparently, AC Milano, the front runners, allegedly people, and his, his manager, uh, Motta, could be going to Juventus, who have also been linked with him. So we'll have to see how this develops. Now, I've never seen this guy play, but apparently Arsenal are one of many European clubs who are interested in Corinthians youngster Bruno Biden, according to reports from Brazil, where the 19-year-old's concerned. Apparently, Barcelona and English clubs are also interested. Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund have been name dropped. Corinthians, Corinthians won't set a price for the sale yet and apparently won't do that. The club claim they won't sell him now as they want him to develop there and play for them for a while. So there you have it. But sorry for hitting the mic there. But as long as we're scouting individuals, I'm all for that, people, and trying to find players. Romano and Zubamendi, it's a bit boring talking about Zubamendi, ain't it, folks? From what I'm hearing, Mikel Arteta is still a big fan of the player and believes he could be perfect for any club around the world. Zubamendi remains one of the most sought-after players in Europe. Let me clarify, first of all, that Zubamendi is not desperate to leave Sociedad and he's very happy that he loves the city and loves the club. A big money bid could see him leave the club and his contract has a release clause of 60 million euros, folks. Uh, Klopp's doing not mind games, but for what it's worth, Arsenal are a good football team. And if they, in brackets, Man United play like today versus Liverpool, Arsenal win that game, I'm 100% sure. I mean, Old Trafford isn't the best of grounds for us to travel at. And if we can't win there, then we'll never do. Even though I think we was great at Anfield and at, at the Etihad, but we still didn't win. Big us up for taking four points off those teams. Well, you know, we also took three off United, but you don't get brownie points for that. I'm really sorry to say that, but this is a matter of fact. We should have won both games, including last month's FA Cup tie, and didn't. That's our fault. There you have it. And Liverpool aren't really as clinical as they could be. We was once linked with Onana Everton, who have actually had another points deduction this season. Could lower their asking price for the Barcelona target to around 50 million quid. So that could be something to watch. Apparently, Jean uh, Cancelo, who we've been linked with again, people, he wants to reject all offers to play for Barcelona. So that's 
the status on him. Sporting will not accept offers of less than 100 million for Jokerez. Arsenal and Chelsea have shown an interest in the forward. Apparently, keeping up the theme with strikers, you know, the ITKs of this world are saying there's a potential for Eddie Nketiah to be involved in a swap deal with Leicester star Jewsbury Hall this summer, who has been linked with Arsenal and Spurs. And you'd imagine Eddie and Ketty is someone that's probably going to be sold, people, in that regard. Uh, Gabriel Zou said, I don't remember the last day I played without pain, as we've seen before. On the Joshua Zerski front, people, once again, we've been linked with him. Bayern, AC Milan and um, AC Milan and Juventus are all chasing him. Do Bayern need him? You've got Young Tell, you've got Harry Kane. Does it make sense for him to go back there? It's only regarding Arsenal that the journalists bring some information about the numbers on the table, claiming that the Gunners are ready to offer a salary of six million euros to convince Zerski to join them. I really like his technical level, if I'm honest. He's got 11 goals and six assists in 31 appearances. The bad news for Arsenal and other interested sides is that Bayern have a clause to buy him back from the Italian club. So in the case they actually move for him, they may end up having a clear advantage. So... Read into that what you must, folks. And again, we've seen that already. What, what have we got here? Once again, AC Milan have Jokerez on their shortlist as Arsenal keep chasing people. Um, Apparently, Arsenal will sign an important striker this summer, says Romano. One of the names on the list is Jokerez. They've been following the sport in Lisbon striker during this remarkable season, but they're not the only ones. Jokerez is appreciated by Arsenal, but they still have to decide what they're going to do. And remember that the Swedish striker has a €100 million Euro release clause, with Sporting insisting that they want something very close to this fee, not something like €50 or €60 million, Euros, as reported by some media outlets people. Um Tony Mowbray described Jokerez as too fast, too strong and too big after he impressed and set up a goal when the two sides, when, when commentary played Sunderland last year. So he could be some. We have been linked with Isaac, so we'll have to see. And once again, various reports have said our shortlist contains Zertsky, Osimhen, uh, Jokerez, Sesko and Ivan Ferguson. So we'll have to see how that one there develops, people. Finally, apparently Team Talk can exclusively reveal that Arsenal have received a boost in their pursuit of sporting centre-back Osman Diamande, who is also a target for Chelsea. The 20-year-old is widely considered to be one of the best young defenders in Europe and he could be on the move this summer, although he'll demand, command better yet a big fee. Apparently, they reported in early March that Diamandi was identified by Chelsea as a player they'd like to bring to the table. Um, he has a £69 million release clause. Apparently, it seems that Arsenal have leapfrogged their rivals in the race for the talented youngster, who we did want at the, in, in, during his days in Denmark. Apparently, Team Talk sources state Diamandi is excited by the prospect of joining Arsenal, and that would be his preferred move this summer if the opportunity presents itself. Now, that's music to my ears, but like with the Mudrick stuff, things can happen. So... The players got convinced, convinced to join us. Whether we can agree something with Sporting where Jokerez and Diamande are concerned is a completely different ball game. He's currently played 32 times, people. And, you know, 69 million, is he going to eclipse Saliba or Gabriel? Is it just another defender added to the ranks, you know, because nobody really says this when Man City sign big players. So it'd be nice to have a competitive squad, people. But yeah, with that being said, let me know your early predictions for Arsenal versus Bayern Munich. Let me know the talking points that you've seen from Gen what you think of it from Gnabry, Muller, Mikel Arteta, uh, Odegaard and Gabriel Jesus. Let me know your thoughts on the transfer stuff we went over, people. So yeah, big up yourselves. Big up Frank and obviously big up Alex of the different knock. You know, by the time this video comes out, my live streams with them where we discussed everything, Arsenal should have been released. So yeah, people. And don't forget, live from 7 p.m. tomorrow we'll be doing a watch along for Arsenal versus Bayern Munich so there's plenty of content for you lot tactical analysis player analysis news all that sort of stuff go and have a butchers on the channel subscribe if you haven't make sure you smash the like button and leave a comment thank you for tuning in this was a longer video than I planned but I do this for you lot because I love you lot journey to 70k is alive and kicking make sure you're comment liking and subscribing because we're closing up to 60 bless up folks peace